what we now have on screen shows us the LFP file that we have in RAM. If I expand the design library, we also see colored example that SLD LFP, which was right, which was recently saved. Looking, however, at what I am showing on screen, I have the colored example that SLD LFP that I just typed the name in for and saved. But on screen, I have another part. I still have my original library features source part on screen. This is because the add to library command does a save as copy function. Remember, SOLIDWORKS has three save commands. Save, save as, and save as copy. And we have an entire chapter devoted to that in the file management class, or the fifth day of the essentials class as we as is it now, um, regarding those three save commands. But as a quick refresher, the save as copy command takes a copy of what's in RAM, writes that to disk, that's the cutout example file I just created. But what's in RAM stays the old file. Now, I did the function to make a library feature file. So essentially, what SOLIDWORKS did was it converted what was in, on screen to an LFP file as well. I do not need to save this as a library feature file. So I will close the file called library features source. And when it asks me to save it again, I'll say no. Because I have the copy with the name cloud example already saved. And it's simply now a matter of me being able to drag and drop this if I want to use it. However, there are some other things I would like to examine and maybe change about my LFP file. So I'm going to right click and open my newly created cloud example SLD LFP and examine our feature manager tree. Notice prongs and chamfer are there with the little green L indicating that they are the library features. Base extrude was kept because we need something to cut into. The other features were extraneous and we told SOLIDWORKS to strip those out and it did. Looking at the feature manager tree, I'm going to check my references and make sure that they are as I wish. And the placement plane, drag and drop to a face to cut into, and a couple of edges, most likely to constrain position from, based on the sketch of the cutout. And in fact, looking at the sketch of the prongs, confirms that it does indeed have two, um, two dimensions that take care of location. And those are automatically then pulled as references when the add to library function is done. And this is made into an LFP file. If I look at my dimensions folder, I have a number of dimensions listed. These dimensions listed here will all be available for the end user to modify if they want by using the override dimensions checkbox that we saw earlier. However, there are some dimensions that are not for size, they are for location. And you must make sure that those are put in the proper folder before you try to use the file. I have locating dimensions as mentioned or referenced here for these two edges. Those dimensions are listed here and have been named center underscore LOC for location and bottom location. It's a very good idea to rename dimensions that you want to use in your LFP files because it'll make more sense to you or someone else using it down the road. So rather than having another D1, D2, or D3, I have already renamed those for their purpose. And I'm going to use that to good effect here because it's easy now for me to figure out which are the locating dimensions. And I'll simply take these and drag and drop them 
into the locating dimensions folder. You do have to drag and drop these individually. If you try to control or shift select, Solaris currently will not take the group. It will only take the last one that you selected, and it will tell you such. So I have now taken a couple of dimensions and put them in the locating dimensions folder to let Solaris know that's what they're for. They're not for size, they're for position. All the other dimensions are available regarding the size, possibly depth, of our feature, although in this case I believe the cut is through all. You'll also notice that we have some dimensions for the chamfer as well. I may want to hide some of these dimensions from the end user, so they're not tempted to change some of the dimensions they really shouldn't be changing. In order to hide dimensions from the end user, I can drag and drop those dimensions, and I'll use the chamfer dimensions here, into the internal dimensions folder. Those then do not show up even if you check on override dimensions. They simply won't be listed. So I will see these dimensions listed if I hit override dimensions when I place the feature, but I will not see these two because they are internal or hidden from that screen. At this stage, I'm simply going to save the, um, the, the file again, but before more thing before I do, I'm going to zoom in pretty tight to my uh, features. This is because when you perform a save, that also updates the icon you see in the design library. Essentially, what SolidWorks does is it takes whatever the graphics area of your LFP looks like at the time of save and uses that as the icon for it in the feature manager tree. You may have to hit the refresh button from time to time to get those to update properly. 